Hi and welcome back to Gamers Web. Uh, today I'm going to do something I've not done for a long, long while and I've never done this on cam before. I'm going to do a quick painting tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to paint a Supermarine Spitfire Mark II from um, Blood Red Skies by Warlord Games. Uh, nice little plane, um, dead easy to paint, you can paint it very, very quickly. As you can see by my hands, I've painted quite a few in the past few hours, but I've just left this one uh, so I can show you guys how to do it very, very quickly. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video at certain points to give the chance to dry, uh, the plane trance to dry. Um, as you can see, it's already been primed. Uh, I primed this with a humble black because I ran out of the Games Workshop black, which I normally use. And um, it came out all right. Okay, so for this, we're going to use um, whatever paints we've got to hand. Um, there's lots of different colour uh, schemes you can do for Spitfires. Um, from early war to late war, uh, I just chose a very, very simple scheme that um, I think it works. Uh, hopefully it works anyway. Right, okay, so you'll have to burr with me once I uh, get set up. Okay, so I'm going to be using um, this pot of uh, acrylic, which is a Mac 29 from Humbrol, um, a Scar White, sorry, White Scar, from uh, Games Workshop. This is just for the basics. And a matte uh, 65, again from Humbrol. And Tasty Tasty Null Noil, um, which will come in uh, to play very, very soon. Okay, so I'm gonna use three techniques doing this. Um, the first one is dry brushing, the second one is a wet brushing and the third one is just painting this general okay so dry brushing um it's quite a simple technique to do um this brush believe it or not is knackered look at the bristles on that yeah this was a size three and is probably about 15 maybe 16 years old i've had this for a long long time and it works brilliantly so if it doesn't if it's not broken don't fix it right so um, dry brushing uh, quite simple get some paint on your brush now I use this brush for almost everything <laughs> obviously I use detail brushes as well but I use this brush quite a lot so I'm just gonna wipe a little of the excess on and then get a cloth or a uh, piece of tissue I prefer using cloth because the coarseness on the cloth allows me to get off most of the paint and just basically what you want to do is get off most of the pigment on the on the whatever you're using to wipe it off and then simply just hold your miniature and then if i can just get the camera in so there we go like that and then just brush this on you don't have to be neat actually i've taken too much paint off though you don't have to be neat at all just uh brush it onto the miniature like that so it goes in all the recesses and all over the miniature. Now, what I'm going to do is um, the top and the bottom and let that dry and then we'll come back and do a different colour. Okay, so basically you're putting the, the brush on, the paint on the brush, sorry, and putting it backwards and forwards and just brushing all over the miniature so it starts to change colour. It's no longer black it's now like a muddy brown at the moment which is just what we want and as you can see it's no longer black on the top and on the bottom it's completely black okay i'm actually going to leave the bottom um i'll show you how to do the bottom in a second right like that there we go okay so that's the top part done. It only takes a few minutes. Now the bottom part, I'm just going to paint on. Just going to clean my brush. And I'm going to use, yeah, always shake your paints up or stir your paints up before you use them, it's a good idea. I'm going to use this uh, Humbrol Matte 65. Now, I've used these before um, when I've actually been painting uh, full size. Uh, model kits, Spitfires and other planes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the bottom of the Spitfire and I'm just going to put this on. doesn't matter if you go over slightly because we're going to be covering this all entirely with no oil. 
and um, as you can see just at the nose I'm actually only going up to the bottom of the propeller uh, roundel or whatever whether you call it the shaft of the propeller um, and then just very very quickly do this it doesn't have to be neat because you can tidy that up um, when you get to the last stage okay like that and then a bit more Okay, okay. Right. And I'm just gonna neaten that little line up there. And there. Right, like that. So one side's blue and the other side is a light brown. Okay, you can see there's little bits of let me move my fingers without getting them wet. There's little bits of blue showing at the, the edge of the brown, which um I will tidy up once. I get to the whole next stage well sorry the, the stage after the next stage okay so i'm just going to leave that to dry for a few minutes because the blue takes a little while to dry now the humble paints are pretty good they dry very quickly so i'm um, just gonna clean my brush right and you will find that a lot of people who paint have a thing either called painter's thumb or painter's tongue don't forget cup of tea um, painter's thumb or painter's tongue where you end up with using your thumb as a palette or cleaning the uh, shop shop pointing the making the brush into a point using your mouth and especially just swirl it around on your tongue it happens with uh, lots and lots of painters okay so um once all that's dried um, we're going to come back and go on to the next step. So I'm just going to pause right now. Okay, and welcome back. Um, my video just switched itself off, which is really good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the next stage, which is I'm going to wash the entire miniature. And I'm going for this, I'm going to use Null Oil. Uh, Null Oil is a shared oil from uh, Games Workshop. And it is um, helps if I put the brush the right way around instead of using the end. <laughs> right, um, I actually use this when I'm using Milliput, which is why it's got no uh, black black plastic uh, covering on it. The actual lacquer has come off because this brush is, like I say, it's about 15 years old. Um, so I use this to actually just push Milliput into cracks and things. Uh, I'm my, by no means a brilliant painter. I used to be a very good painter, but now I've got very poor eyesight. So um, I spent a long while wearing spectacles and my eyesight is nowhere near as good as it used to be. Okay, so with Null Noil, um, what I'd normally do is use a palette for my paints, uh, but I'm doing this very quickly. I'm going to try and get this done in under 12 minutes. Right, and I will also paint a lot of them at once. Now this is still a little bit tacky, but not very tacky. So what I'm going to do is, that the last part that I painted, I'm going to paint the top. So basically, just get the null nail on your brush, and then just, so just get the null nail out of the way. And I, you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. Right, so null nail on the brush, and what you want to do is get it so it covers the entire plane. And as you can see, the uh, the dark shade goes into the recesses and brings out all the panel lines. Now you can get, um, uh, for model kits, you can get a thing called panel lining or panel paint, which does the exact same thing. I actually use things like Null Noil on large, spill, large scale aircraft as well. Uh, it's been a good while since I've painted any military stuff like this. Uh, apart from bolt action figures, I don't think I've painted any, an aircraft in a long, long time. Uh, it's normal science fiction and fantasy that I do, mainly science fiction. Okay, so that's the top part done. And I'm just going to turn it over, like that. And it's just a quick coat, like that. And as you can see, much better on this one, on this side, that it, um, it brings out all the panel lining on the bottom of the plane. 
moves very, very quickly. You don't have to be uh, very precise with this because we're going to do a wet brush over the top of it. Okay, so uh, you've probably heard of dry brushing. You may not have heard of wet brushing. Um, dry brushing is where you get as much of the pigment off your brush as possible before putting it on the miniature. Um, but wet brushing is basically what it sounds like. You um, get your brush, put it into your paint, then using your cloth, as I will show you, that's why I say a cloth is much better. This is a just a, a Microprose um, cleaning cloth made of uh, like a terrelin uh, type material. Uh, I think it's polyester microfiber. Anyway, um, these are very cheap. You're like 10 for like three pounds or something like that. I use them for household cleaning. This is brilliant for painting, as you can see. It's covered in paint. Um, this is quite a new one. I've only been using this in about three, three or four days. But okay, so... Um, Actually, I'm just going to show you very quickly how to wet brush on another model. Okay, so to wet brush, we find the colour we want to use, which, for this instance, I'm going to use the the sky blue, the matte 65. And I'm going to get my brush and my cloth. I'm going to put paint on my brush, which I normally do in a palette, as I say. And I wipe the excess off onto the paint, and then I am just going to very, very quickly just one wipe off like that and hold the brush and then just uh, try and get it so you can see. Like that, I'm just going to very gently uh, put on this plane that has already been inked. Um, just going to highlight it slightly using this wet brush technique. You may have to find you'd have to do it a couple of times. Like that. Then it picks out most of the detail. You can, of course, just um, dry brush again on top of the dried ink, which is uh, quite acceptable and works just as well. Okay. Well, I'm waiting for my ink to dry. I'm going to use a paint that I didn't say in the start. I'm going to use a bad and black, again from Games Workshop. Right, and with that, I'm just going to pick the plane up. I'm going to turn him over. It's still very damp. And I'm just going to um, put a little bit of black where the Exhausts are for the engine in front of the propeller, and then I'm going to do the same on the cockpit. Now it's up to you how you do your cockpits, where you do them sky blue, light blue, black, grey. Obviously, you're not going to be able to, be able to paint a, a full cockpit. There you go, like that. So leave that to dry, and I'll come back in a few months, and when that's done, we can uh, move on to the next step. Hi, uh, okay, so um, our plane is dried at the moment. Um, I've put a little black on the um, aerial uh, at the back of the cockpit, and I've also painted the nose clone black. Now, um, a good thing to do is to look up references of aircraft, especially if you want them to be accurate. Um, this one is just basically um, a bog standard uh, Spitfire Mark II um, that would have been seen action between 39 and 1940. Um, I'm not going to go overboard on it because um, you don't really need a lot of detail for a, an aircraft that's 1 200th scale that's so small that you're viewing it from 6 feet away that any detail is just going to vanish. So what I'm going to do next is I've dry brushed the top and I've wet brushed the bottom. So the wet brush has bring out all the detail. And I've also, as you can probably see, um, painted the uh, wheels uh, that are in the um, wheel housing here. Okay, 
Uh, I may have to put a little bit more ink on there because you can't really see the uh, struts for the wheels. Okay, so um, just in case you're wondering, uh, the reason why it's brown on top and blue on the bottom, it's quite simple really, although uh, a lot of people don't realise it. Um, it's brown on the top because if you're coming down in a Messerschmitt ME109 or BF109 uh, from above, and you've got a plane below you, it's harder to see it if it's brown on top. Likewise, if you're below it, like that, and it's blue, it's harder to see it. It's a lot harder to see because it matches in with the sky and the clouds. Um, it's just a bit of trivia, but not much. Okay, so what I've done for the next thing, I'm actually going to use a smaller brush. I'm not going to use my old famous brush. The one that I use for everything. Uh, I'm going to use a smaller brush because I need to use uh, smaller lines. So I've mixed a little bit of the brown and the blue together uh, to make, um, which now started to dry, uh, to make a very light brown. And I'm just going to uh, get my brush like this and I'm just going to stipple onto it a rough camo outline. You don't have to be precise, it doesn't have to follow any um, pattern because they didn't in World War II. They were just to break up the um, outside of the plane. Like that. So it just basically breaks up the silhouette of the plane so when it's viewed from above. Um, it can't really be seen very well by enemy fighters. Okie dokie, almost done. There we go. So, like that. I'll put some proper pictures in the in the video. Um, that's just very, very basic. Now, you can go on the bottom and do the bottom part of the plane, but I'm not going to do that. And... What you can also do is add a little bit of the lighter shade to your mix and just uh, give these a little bit more depth by going over the centre of them with the lighter paint. So it looks a little bit like that. Okay, and on the other side. Okay, all right. What I'm going to do is just one last line there because I've got a big gap that I want to kind of break up. As I say, you don't really want to go too much overboard because you'll just be going at it for ages and ages, and then you might end up having to want to paint over it again because you've put too much on. Okay, so that's the Spitfire Mark II, more or less done. Um, all I need to do now is my brush. all I need to do now is once it's dry completely I will um, give it a coat of uh, lacquer um, a lot of people use um, uh, clear lacquer uh, from model shops or places like Games Workshop like Purity Seal um, I'm old school because I try and do everything on the cheap if I can uh, so I use um, hairspray which being bald is <laughs> Is always a always a bit of a, a, a an oxymoron really, but I use her spray and um, it dries clear and it doesn't yellow because uh, a lot of lacquers and uh, gloss gloss especially gloss tend to yellow with age. Um, it gives a protection to your paint and it doesn't yellow, which is great. Okay, so um, that's more or less done. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'll do another video very shortly on um, putting the decals on. Uh, I've got to wait until my decals arrive from Warlord, and they're on order, so hopefully I should get those very soon, and I can do that. Uh, but basically, that's your uh, Spitfire, that one, from uh, Blood Red Skies. As always, I've been Mark, Gamers Web, by Gamers, for Gamers. Here are a few photos of the plane. Uh, it just needs to tidy them up a little bit, which I will do before I do the decals in the next video.